Hey guys, hello everybody. I am hoping that everyone is having an amazing day today. Uh, it is fabulous Friday. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you so much for tuning in to me for your Fab Friday word of the day. I am Prophetess Trish Moore and said, hey, good evening. Thank you for coming on. I'm live on Periscope. I'm live on Facebook. Uh, so thank you guys for taking a minute to tune in and joining me on today's segment. Prophetess Trish Moore said, of Trisha Ministries, executive pastor serving alongside my husband, Senior Pastor Derek Moore said, of Mind of Christ International. And I am here to encourage your spirit to, uh, to, help you get to another level. Well, on today is a very cold day where I'm at and uh, outside of Birmingham, Alabama, it's been snowing all day. So I'm locked into my home office on today, uh, just trying to pour out into you guys. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in on Facebook Live with me, as well as Periscope. Make sure you share this with your followers and invite someone to come on uh, to hear the word that God has given me to strengthen you on today. Um, if you joined me on last week, I have been uh, talking about uh, just really making you uncomfortable, making you really think about your 2018. We still got time in 2017, but I have been challenging you to do some things differently. I have been challenging you to really think about where you're at right now, so that you can be make the changes for your 2018. And, not, and I'm not talking about New Year's resolution. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about really strategically planning, really strategically evaluating where you are right now so that you can get to another level. Last week, I challenged you to be the CEO of your empire. Uh, being the CEO of your empire, being the CEO of your enterprise simply means that you are the one in charge. You're taking charge, you're calling the shots, and you're doing what you need to do. As a CEO of Trisham Enterprises and as CEOs of any major conglomeration, one of the things that we do, and I talked about this last week, is we strategize for the year. We set quarterly goals. And I challenge you to do that with your life. Where your quarterly goals for 2018. What is your first quarter going to look like? Second quarter, third quarter, and how are you going to end the year with a bang? Some of us never sit down and actually do that. We never sit down and evaluate our life. This is what we do. We say, for this year, this is what I want to achieve. This is what I'm hoping to accomplish. And so you set down some you know, things that you want to achieve for 2018, which is great. All right. That's like the overall big picture. But how many of you actually sit down and strategically plan each quarter out things that you want to accomplish, things that you want to fulfill for each quarter? This is this is where you have a strategic plan on what you're going to do. Now, one of the things that a, a great CEO does is they analyze each quarter. What were the what what were the sales? What were the losses? Uh, what are the changes that need to make? So after each quarter, now I need you to go and evaluate your life. Some of us already have not done this all year, but after each quarter, let's say uh, we're starting out with the first quarter of 2018, uh, and you set some goals. What was lacking? What was missing? What did you do that 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 you felt like didn't work? Uh, was it an attitude change? Was it your finances? Was it something in relationship? Was it something? I need you to clearly define, you know, you, we talk about goal setting all the time, but a lot of times we miss what we want God to do because we don't specifically plan uh, what we what we believe in for. We said an overall goal, oh, by 2018, I want to uh, be married. Okay, let's say that that's a specific goal that you have for 2018. And then you say, I want to be married, but what are, that's the overall end result. But what strategic steps are you taking to get to that? And uh, for example, in the first quarter, if you want to be married by 2018 and by the end of 2018, one, goal one, go out more. 
go go to uh pray and be specific uh focus on the declarations that i'm believing god for for my specific husband pray that i position myself that i may be found if you're a woman anyway uh so that he can find you see there are strategic things that you need to do in order to achieve that that you're desiring from god you just you see this is the mistake of a lot of christians we just throw a vision out in the air and hopefully that at some point in our life at some point in 2018 god will manifest it but we don't understand that faith without works is dead and that there are certain things that that yes you're believing you wrote it down you made a vision but there are certain things within that that you have to do and sometimes it's like this quote that i i put up this week for those of you who saw it i said you have to be brave enough to live your best life now sometimes being brave enough to live your best life now meaning to accomplish those goals there are some some crazy decision major decisions that you have to make one you have to say i'm going to step away from this type of environment because it's not going to attract the type of person that i want you know and i'm still just just basing this on if you want to be married you can change this to any goal that you want but i'm just giving an example so you guys can follow me so if you say uh, by the end of 2018, I want to be married. That's an example. Uh, first quarter, what are you going to do? You're going to strategically position yourself out of places or, or, or from around people that are negative or, or that put you in a, a bad mindset that that make your attitude just go uh, 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 in a places that you never that God doesn't intend for it to go. You have to strategically plan throughout the year. How is it that I am going to? Uh, 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 get to the end result, this end vision. So if you say, okay, God, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about finances. Okay. We, 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 we talk about husband or, or finding a wife, or, 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 you know, that type of thing, but there are strategic things that you have to do throughout the year to position yourself. There are things that you have to do and you just can't expect God to just boom. I've been praying about it for, this is where we go wrong. We've been praying about things for years and years and years and years. And then we don't see a manifestation because God is saying, you're not, some of us are not positioning ourselves to get to the manifestation of what he does. He's been telling us to cut off relationships for so long. He's been telling us to take ourselves out of certain type of environments. He's been telling us to do certain things, to do certain type of prayers, to do certain type of fasts, and for a certain amount of times. And sometimes we don't do that, and that's disobedience. Delayed obedience is still disobedience. And then we look at God like what had happened was, God said what had happened was you're not positioning yourself so that I'm, I can bless you. Now, now, this is not for everybody because some some people god wants us to walk in long suffering because he's trying to do something in us i know we don't like that word long suffering is simply the same thing as patience some people god is requiring us to do long suffering so that we can endure and so that we can go through certain things but there are some of us who are simply not positioning ourselves to meet up with the promise you could throw you could throw a vision a resolution or whatever out there all day long but if you don't position yourself meaning that if you don't strategically plan throughout the year to set yourself up for that very thing then you're gonna miss it so the first quarter what are you gonna do you're gonna do a certain type of prayer you're gonna do a certain type of fast okay however long God puts in your spirit second quarter the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to focus on uh, 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 let's say uh, positioning yourself out more maybe you don't go out enough to meet meet people maybe you're not doing things uh, that God want you to do he wants you to uh, 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 volunteer and do something God might have strategically put something in your spirit to do but because you ain't got that much time you don't really want to do it uh, you know if you never know what God puts in your spirit to do that it may set you up for the end result of your promise and so a lot of times we think that that, you know we got this inkling in our spirit to do something but because we don't feel like it because we tired because this and we sit down on what God had told us to do then we miss God and so we have there's simply all throughout the year you got to figure out you got to ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you on how can you strategically meet up with the promise that you're believing him for let's talk about finances a lot of us 
tired of being broke as a joke. Okay, so let's figure this thing out. What is it that we got to do to meet up with the promise of God? What is it that we got to do to go to another level in our finances? Believe me, I know what it means to be broke as a joke. I know what it means to be struggling. I done wrote a book about it. I done told y'all my testimony about it. How I told God, God, we got grown folk bills around here. You got to do something to enlarge my territory. I, I'm doing the prayer of Jabez right about now. Enlarge me, oh God. Uh, 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 bless my hands. You know, I know what that feels like. And so what I had to do was I had to strategically go to God. I set a vision. I set a plan. I set a roadmap. Okay, God, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. What am I going to be able to do? Because look, God, I already told you I'm broke as a joke. So how in the world? I know it takes money to make money, but you got to show me something different to do than to keep spending money because right now I really don't have it. So I strategically went before God and was like, God, show me what is it that I need to do in this season and this time and in this hour to get to where I need to be. And so in the first quarter, there were things that I did strategically uh, will you pray and agree with me that my husband and I close on our house December 15th? Absolutely. I will definitely do that. I'm going to be covering that from try to before I get off. Uh, uh, let me tell you something. There are strategic things uh, that I had to do to plan on uh, getting out of the financial rut that I was in uh, because I hated the position. I wanted to be a blessing to my house. I wanted to help my husband with the finances, but the way God had put me in, God, you challenged me to step out on faith and start this business, but it ain't working. Why is it not working? I'm suffering long. I don't even like what I'm doing right now. Then I start the business. I like that, but it ain't making no money. So what do I got to do? Do I got to go back to Egypt to actually make money? And so what I had to do was I, first thing was I, I sat down and I, I was still. I, I, I sat down and I was still because I got tired of being broke. I got tired of looking at uh, 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 my, my business not doing nothing. Like, really, God, you called me. You told me to do this. And now you're going to leave me stranded. But God said, be brave enough to live your best life now. What does that mean? That means I have to strategically do things that will cause me to be fearful. I got to do it scared and all. I got a plan scared and all. I got to sow the last $50 I got, scared and all. Come on, somebody, because I know I'm touching somebody right now. And so what God gave me was he was like, for this quarter, for this time and for this season, this is what I need you to do. Okay, Holy Ghost, I got you. I began to write that down. Then he was like, for this, and then now I need you to do this. And so every quarter, every time I was looking around, I was strategically planning on doing something. Now, I didn't have a lot to work with, so I worked with the little that I had until I was able to get the abundance that I desired. Watch this. It took time. It took patience. But here's the thing about those of you who have businesses. It's like you, you, you want the increase, but God said, you're not willing to do this little things that, that I need you to do. And so because of fear, because of hesitation, because of lack, because of this, you know what I'm saying? I have gone through what I like to call pork and bean and weenus seasons just so that I can sow and I can do what God told me to do. And so here's the thing. I began to evaluate the quarters. I began to evaluate what was working, what wasn't working, changes that I need to make. And as I did the little things, it's the little things that will take you to an abundance. It's the little acts of faith that will bring the increase. It's the little acts of faith. See, a lot of times people don't want to sow into themselves. Uh, they don't want to sow to where they want to go. And so a lot of times God was saying coaches, he was saying mentors, he was and all of that. Before I got to this level, I was like, okay, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this and I'm going to start listening to people. I'm going to start getting coached. I'm going get, to start getting mentored. I'm going to start getting trained. I have been coached, mentored, trained in pretty much every, as every aspect of my life. Some people don't believe in that. Some people don't believe in sowing seeds and, and sowing into themselves so they can grow. But I'm telling you, I'm an avid believer of that because I know that God positions people in our lives for a reason, that there is something that we need to pull from them. And so if you're tired of being broke, 
broke, if you're tired of being without a husband, if you're tired of, I'm telling you, you got to be brave enough to live your best life now. That means brave enough to say no to some folks, say no to some places, say no to some situations, and brave enough to sit yourself in your house, in your office, in a room, in your closet, wherever your alone time is. Brave enough to sit down and figure out a plan and a strategy for your life. Now, when I was going through that season, did it magically appear? No, there's no magic in the kingdom, but there are there is the supernatural in the kingdom. And so God will supernaturally manifest things at our lives at, at specific points in time. And so God will strategically manifest a contract. Watch this. I positioned myself, right, to hear God. One of the things I challenge y'all, watch this now, and I'm going to challenge you too. In my prophetic program, the prophetic gives out, I'm tra I challenged my classes. I said, get somewhere because this is what helped me. Y'all want to hear how I got out of a financial rut? This is one of the things that helped me. I'm challenging my classes right now to go somewhere and sit for five minutes in complete silence. As a matter of fact, I told them to put a timer on. I said, put a timer on. Your phone, your clock, stopwatch, whatever you got. Put a timer on for five minutes. Sit in, sit in, in, in an isolated place where there's no noise. And I just want you to listen for the voice of God. I just want you to say, Father, your servant is listening. And when you do that, now this is what I told the people, all my, all my mentees. I said, when you do that, the biggest challenge is going to be making your mind be still because thoughts are going to go to and fro, to and fro, to and fro. You want a prophetic word from God? This is how you get it. You don't need a prophet. You don't need a pastor, teacher, evangelist. You don't need that. All you need is to position yourself right now in this season, this time and hour, when you ain't got a, 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 a prophet around you, when you ain't got nobody around you, all you need to do is position yourself so that you can hear. So this is what I challenge everybody. My mentee's in my program right now. I said, get to a quiet place, five minutes, sit out and tell God you're listening. And as you do that, I said, have your notebooks ready because as you hear things, now listen to this. Sometimes God will give you one word and you write that one word down. Sometimes he will give you a full sentence. You write that full sentence down. Sometimes he'll give you nothing, but you sit there the whole five minutes uh, ready to hear, eager to hear, waiting to know what is God saying in this season? God, what am I doing? How do I get out of this financial row? How do I, how do I get from broke as a joke? How do I get from alone and isolated to feel like nobody is with me? Sit yourself down, open up your ears, and hear God. Now watch this. Everybody say, well, I can't. This has been the hardest five minutes. I can't hear. I'll be thinking about the food I got to cook and the chew, and, and, the, and the, I got to go get some shoes, and I got to go get clothes. And anyway, I said, yep, that's how you know that you have been too busy to hear what God wants you to do. That's your clue right there. When you can sit down for five minutes in complete silence and can't even focus on God's voice, you all you know is everything that's around you, everything that's right, everything that's not right, everything you got to do, everything you want to do. It just all of a sudden starts raging when your mind is supposed to be focused on hearing from God. See, this is how I got out of my I was brave enough to sit there and say, God, I need to hear you. I need to hear you and I need to figure out how to get out of this position. And as I did that, as I began to sit, to listen to the voice of God, God would download a little nugget here. He would download a little nugget there. He would give me one word here. And I began to write down all this stuff. And then I, I kid you not, on some days, it was absolutely nothing that God would speak to me. You know what those days meant? That th Those days meant that he wanted me to sit and just rest in his peace, just rest in his presence. He just did, He just wanted us to have that moment together. Nobody talked, but it's just us just having that inter intimacy with one another. And so there were some days where God wouldn't speak nothing. And there were some days where he would give me a word. There were some days where he would give me a whole sentence. There were some days he'll give me a whole idea. Now, are you listening to words only? No. When you get in that quiet place, sometimes God will give you a vision right in the midst of your meditation. He will give you a vision. It will flash clearly before your mind. And as you see the vision, you have to write down what he showed you in the spirit realm. See, some you be listening, look, looking for a word, but a lot of times God will give it to you in pictures. So it's up to you to sit down. And if your mind is still at a place where you 
you can receive, you will begin to get the movie that God is playing on your screen. Come on, somebody, because your mind is a screen. screen. And if you allow your mind to be blank, God will give you a motion production that you will never forget. He will begin to speak utterances. He will begin to show you a movie that's on your big screen. And if you follow the script, he's, he will bring you into a land of blessings, breakthrough, and favor like never before. You want to know how I came from making $125 with my translation agency in one year to making well over six figures the next year or whatever? Because I began to sit and I began to hush my mouth. See, a lot of times we come to God with complaints and we come to God with, with, with frustrations and, and, and God said, no, I just need you to come to me and hush your mouth. You talk all the time. You've been praying the same prayer for 10 years. Can you just be quiet and let me get a word in every now and then? Because if you, it's in that quiet place that I can show you what you're really working with. It's in that quiet place where I can give you revelation I can give you visions. I can put you in trances that you've never been in before. It's in that quiet place. And if you will just be still, if you will just use the anointing of shut up, then I can speak. Now, sometimes it's not the shut up of your mouth. It's the shut up of your mind. Tell your mind to hush. You know what your mind is? That's your soul. Your soul is, is, is connected with your flesh. Your, your soul is your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotions. You got to shut your soul up so that your spirit can hear. And so I began to sit down and I began to be like, now, God, you know, I ain't got no money in the bank account. You know, my husband working out, he doing all he can to support this house. You know, God, you know, and God said, mm -hmm, I, I, I also know I'm waiting on you to hush. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, make it plain, Jesus. I also know I'm waiting on you to hush. I, I, I'm waiting on you to hush so I can talk because you know this is a two-way thing now because you've been talking for 10 years. You've been talking for five years. You've been talking for the last two months and complaining about your, your manner that I done brought down from the sky that you ain't quite happy with because you want a newfound manner and that manner that got old to you and, and you ready for the new manner. You've been complaining about that like my children of Israel for so long now. I'm just waiting on you to hush. And so I begin to say, hmm, maybe I do need to hush because I know God hear me. He says act like he don't hear me me sometimes and the only reason he acting like he don't hear me sometimes because I'm talking too much. Mm, yeah. Have you ever been in a conversation with your those of you that are married and you just talk, 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 and your husband ain't saying nothing. It's like Lord, I'm just waiting on her to hush your mouth because she just keep talking. She just keep talking. She just keep talking. And then you know, wore them out by the time you you finish saying they ain't got nothing to say. Now God, God the same way. It's just like I'm just waiting on you to hush. I'm waiting on you, and you know, woke God up. Now he ain't got nothing to say. He just want to walk away from the car. I don't know about you, but that's been me and my husband in, in some conversation. I mean, like, well, you ain't got nothing to say. Well, what what you want me to say? You just said it all. That's like that's just like God, y'all. I'm telling you. You know, we be talking, 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 and then we waiting on God to say something. God be like, well, you didn't, you got it all figured out. What you want me to say? What you want me to say? See, this is a hard truth. This is a hard truth. But I'm trying to make it plain so we can understand what God needs us to do in this season. He just needs us to hush. And so I'm going back to me because, hey, this might not even be you. This may just be me. I'm preaching to the choir right now. If it ain't for nobody else, it's for me because I've been there. I've done that. I wrote a book about it. And now I'm trying to live what I done preached all these years. Because, listen, as God began to minister to me and he began to show me these things, I implemented those things one step at a time. No, I didn't have no money to do a completely new website. I found a, a way to do it for free. No, I didn't have money to 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 do all of this stuff and all this marketing and advertising. So I found ways to do it for free because the Holy Spirit was downloading things in me that I didn't even know was there all because I had the gift of shut up. That shut up anointed. You know that shut up anointed that came over Zacharias, you know, when he couldn't say, when he couldn't speak faith, the angel said, now, now, you, your mouth going to be closed. You're going to shut your mouth until the appointed time come. And the appointed time came when the, uh, when the baby came for, was it, uh, who was it, John? They birthed John the Baptist. Then they, he opened up his mouth until he was able to speak faith. The gift of shut up, the anointing to shut up came upon him. And so a lot of times God is just waiting on us to shut up. Because when we shut up, then that's when he can speak. And so I shut up. 
I did. And that was, and for women, that's a hard thing to do because we sure got a lot to say. We got a lot to say. We want to make sure we heard. We want to make sure you understand where we're coming from. We want to make sure you get the point because we feel like we are making a very valid point and we are for real, for real about what we're saying. And, and we know that we know that we're right, but we're just trying to make it, make you understand that we are right and you just need to act like you hear us. See, that's how women are. Men, they opposite. God, God is like, God don't think like us. His ways are, are so much higher. And so he's waiting on us to have a moment of humility where we can just say, okay, God, I'm listening because I know I've been talking for about 10 years about the same thing. You still ain't gave me my husband. I still ain't got that six-figure salary. And you know I'm believing you for this house, right? And, and I still ain't got that. So, you know, I've been talking, talking, talking about this house, this car, this husband, this money. And I, I still ain't got it. So I'm going to just hush my little mouth because apparently you got something you want to say to me. And I just ain't really positioned myself so I can hear you. I, I'm trying to figure out why I'm sick. I'm trying to figure out why uh, emotionally I'm depressed and I'm stressed. And uh, it's the holiday season. Everybody got a man, ain't got no man. And everybody got money and ain't got no money. And I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out, God, why every year around this time I'm in this boat, I'm in this situation. And, you know, I've been talking to you about it for eight years. It's six years, four, three, two, one. You put your number behind. And so God said, mm-hmm. Now I got you where I need you to be. And that's in a place of humility. That's in a place where, where now you can hear me without hearing you. Y'all hear that? You're in a place where you can hear God without hearing yourself because you talk all the time. Y'all just need to hush. I just need to hush sometimes. You know, I, I'm doing a teaching now in um uh in Prophetic Gifts on Part 2, and, and we're, we're, I'm really diving into fasting. And, and I'm going to give y'all a nugget because I think y'all need to hear this. We all need to hear this. Fasting is all about humbling ourselves. So if you fasting and, and praying for stuff and you constantly the one talking and telling God what you want through this fast, that ain't a form of humility. You just got to hush your God already know you just got to hush your mouth and humble yourself. Are we diving real deep into fasting and prophetic goods on part two? I mean, we're, we're diving real deep. And it all deals with humility. So, so humility says, God, it ain't about me no more. It's about you and your will. And I choose to walk in the anointing and shut up so that I can hear. And, and God said, now I can bless you. See, now I can open up doors, see, because God said, I give grace to the humble, but the proud I'm going to bring to a low. How are we so proud? Because we keep talking like we got everything figured out. It, it's like I know that I know that I know, and I'm going to keep telling you, God. I'm going to keep reminding you. I'm going to keep uh, uh, blessing you. And then if you don't do what I want you to do, when I want you to do, now I'm depressed. Now I'm frustrated. And now I'm mad with God. I'm going to tell you, I've been there, done that. I've had a situation where I was straight up mad with God. Matter of fact, I told God I was tired of praying for myself. I ain't going to pray for myself no more. I'll just pray for other folk because guess what? You don't seem to hear my prayer. So I'm mad now, God. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, I, I did that, didn't I? Right? I, I told God off. I made God feel bad. In my mind, I'm thinking, I see that that's pride, that's pride, that's pride. God said, I always bring a proper person to a low place. That low place was me not now. You who knows? Maybe my struggle, I struggled longer than I should have done. Uh, 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 that long suffering lasted longer because I was too prideful at times. I was too prideful and I didn't catch myself during those moments of pridefulness. I just kind of waddled in my pride because it's all about me. It's me, it's me, it's me. It's me. And so I want y'all to just think about going into 2018. How can you, one, we're going back to building that empire. But another thing about building that empire, which is you and your life, is walking in humility and learning how to hush. I built professional translations into Trisham Enterprises because I learned how to shut up. I learned how to hear God. I learned how to. Uh, uh, to meditate and calm my mind because my mind was everywhere. I learned how to stop being so frustrated and, 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 and to 
learn how to tame my soul so that my spirit can overcome it every time it wants to cut up. Okay, so I see you trying to get up. I see you trying to cut the bug. Okay, I see you. Now I'm finna command you to line up with the spirit. Because one of the things I told them in the prophetic training, I said, your soul, your body is a terrible master, but it's an awesome servant. So y'all gonna catch that in a minute. Your soul is a terrible master, but it's an awesome servant. Catch that. Your soul is a terrible master. Why is it a terrible master? Because it'll keep you in an emotional state that God never intended for you to be. It'll make you go and get in relationships that God never told you to go in. It'll make you go into business adventures that God never told you to do. Your soul is a terrible master, but it's an awesome servant if your spirit can rise up and control that thing every time. I hope y'all remember this, and I hope this is a blessing to you. I talk about all of this in the prophetic gifts on part two, in in in, uh, in uh, my teaching on fasting. Your soul is a terrible master, but it's an awesome servant. So I just really want. I'm gonna keep challenging you. Have you started your goal? Y'all talk with me. Have you started? Being the CEO of your empire, have you taken out your journal and written down first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter goals? Have you started doing that? All right, I'm going to be checking in every week. I want y'all to talk back to me. Let me know if you are really uh, owning being the CEO of your empire. I ain't talking about no business. If you got a business, that's great. Yeah, figure that out too. I'm talking about being the CEO of this empire. This is an empire. This is a major conglomeration. What are you doing? So your homework, if y'all with me, if y'all with me, don't just don't just follow me and listen to me. I want you to take action because wisdom is nothing if you ain't got no application. So I need you to take action. So I'll, I'll make you a chart. First quarter consists of January, February, and March. Second quarter, April, May, June. Then July, August, September, October, November, December. Set it up. What are the things? Okay, New Year's resolution. Let me make it plain. You start out with your big goals, what you want to achieve by the end of the year of 2018. And then you go in each quarter writing the strategic steps that you are going to take so that you can get to the big picture. See, we're going to do things differently this year. I, I'm going into next year. We're going to start right now, strategically planning that right now. If y'all are with me, do it, please, because I'm going to do it. I'm going to start strategically planning already for what 2018 is going to bring. And I'm going to strategically put my little steps of what I'm going to do personally to make sure that I stay focused, that I stay in line, that I stay humble, that I look. Part of your thing is you should do your five-minute meditation. Set you a date every week. Hi, thanks for joining me. Set you a date every week that you're going to do your meditations. Every week so that you can hear what God is telling you, what direction you're supposed to be going, where you at right now, where you need to be. Set you a time so that you can hear what God is going to strategically tell you to do. Okay, be brave enough to live your best life now. And that means some some of the decisions that God gonna tell you to do, it's gonna make you uncomfortable. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's gonna make you very uncomfortable because it's gonna challenge you to do something you've never done before. It's gonna challenge you to cut off relationships and people that you've never done uh, that you've always been around. It's gonna challenge you to do more of something and less of something else. It's going to challenge you. And and God loves challenging us because in those challenges we can get to the next level so with that being said i want to challenge you do something different going into your new year all right uh for those of you the great segue if you want to join my prophetic program uh for the prophetic gift zone do that because i tell you it's going to take you to a whole nother level in your spirit man thinking knowing doing um hearing god i tell you everybody gets to the program talk about how they dreams and enhance the visions and hearing god is clear all of that stuff uh, uh because we are we are tapping into the word of god and what he has for us at another level 
go to trishamnow.com. Uh, I got three free classes so you can get a taste of what the program is like, prophetic realms, prophetic myths, and for prophetic dimensions. Get those three free classes and then sign up for the 12-month uh, program that is going to be absolutely amazing. All right, guys, classes start in just a few weeks. And we only have like two weeks left of enrollment. So if you've not signed up, you are missing out on this program. And I've also opened my draft the fast. If you're not prophetic, if you don't want to go higher in the spirit uh, realm and, and, and understanding the prophetic and hearing God and visions and dreams and interpreting stuff, all of that, and, and you need to go to another level mentally so that you can get your mind right, draft to fab is now open. It's only $47. And if you're not investing in yourself, something is wrong. If you're not investing in with me and my program, invest in yourself somewhere. That's what uh, successful people do. I invest in myself all the time. Matter of fact, I just ordered a, a new program to help me and to go higher in my studies and who God has called me to be. Uh, so invest in yourself. Draft the Fab is all about challenging you mentally. It's only $47 and you get 21 days of coaching mentally, developing your mindset, developing who you are, developing where you're called to. Go to trishamnow.com, enter the site and on my page I have a place called Fab Store. Go into my Fab Store and go into our programs, I believe, or coaching programs. It's on the site, it's just $47. I'm telling you, for 21 days, I'm coaching you, laser sharp coaching from day one to day 21 on how to get to the next level. The One of the best investments you can make is that. Draft the fab in 21 days or the prophetic give zone. The prophetic give zone, guys, we go over so many things. Thank you for posting that for me. Uh, the website, we go over so many things in the prophetic give zone. Have you been dreaming and don't quite understand your dreams and want interpretation, want understanding? Then you need to be in the in that in that program. If you have the gift of discernment, if you see demons or spirits and different things that are resting in places, then <laughs> I'm telling you, you need to be in the program. Uh, if you and, and in the program, it's not all prophets, so you don't have to be a prophet. If you have the gift of prophecy, the spirit of prophecy, or operate in the mantle of the prophet, then you need to be in the program. And let me make it plain, if you're a child of God, that's really all of us, because God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and that we will prophesy. But if you don't have an understanding of what you're saying, then what's the point? You're not going to, you need to have an understanding of what God is saying and doing in this season and this time and in this hour. And so we go over all of that, the 12 mysteries of God, the eight great covenants of God, stuff that you won't hear in the pulpit. We talk about it in the prophetic gifts zone. When I tell you this has changed the lives of so many people, it has. Just go to my website and see the testimonies. I got video testimonials on YouTube of people that have recorded their own personal testimonies of what God has done. So I'm here to motivate and inspire. Thank you so much. Amen. I received that. Thank you. This is my call. This is part of my call and who I am to uplift, to build up the body of Christ and to help them be who they need to be. So draft the fab in 21 days. $47 uh, from um, the prophetic gift zone is only $57. So a month though, because that's 12 months. That's a whole, you get 38 classes, 12 mastermind sessions, worksheets, workbooks. You getting a whole nine with the 12 month program. So make sure you get in because this is amazing. We only got two weeks left of enrollment, two weeks left. And if you want to be a part of this program, then you will, I'm telling you, you're going to love it. All right. So trishamnow.com. Go visit the site, email us if you have any questions, let us know. But we're here to help you grow. All right, everybody. Thank you all so much for tuning in. It's a snowy day where I'm at. I'm at home in my office, but I'm still working. I'm still training. I'm still developing me so that I can help develop you. And so if you don't do anything else for your 2018, invest in yourself and know that you are worth every dollar, whether it's with me or whether it's with somebody else, invest in yourself. All right. Love you guys. Hope you have a wonderful and fabulous Friday. And don't forget, 
share this message with somebody. They need to hear it.